with autism kids, we can also show a movie as the feedback. You bring in a DVD, put the DVD in the computer, but the movie only starts playing when the child is producing healthier brain waves. If the brain goes back to an unhealthy state, the movie starts going dark and the volume goes down. So to keep watching the movie, you have to shift your brain into regulating much more, much more optimally. We found the movies are wonderful for kids on the spectrum. Now, everything starts with a brain mapping. We cannot effectively help a child develop to their fullest potential without a brain mapping. If I go to the emergency room and I have chest pain, they're going to do an electrocardiogram, an EKG of my chest, probably take a chest X-ray. They want to study what my heart is doing. Well, if you have symptoms of a neurodevelopmental disorder, you, we need to know what the brain is doing. And this is a brain mapping of a patient uh, on the on the spectrum that had severe difficulty with socializing, not picking up on social cues, not able to reciprocate social conversation, to be brutally honest and not realize that what this individual was saying was offending other people. And then when the person, and then when this individual patient is criticized for saying things inappropriately, the patient becomes very defensive because they're speaking the truth. So this is a brain mapping of someone on the spectrum. And if you follow me now, if you look at the top row, I hope you can see the cursor. This is your, this is looking straight down top of your head. This is your nose your right ear, your left ear. These 19 dots are where we have electrodes recording brainwave activity. For example, this dot and this dot are right in the middle of your forehead. This dot's the very top of your head. These two dots are in the back of your head. Now, just to show you, expressive language comes from the left frontal part of the brain. Receptive language is this area left posterior. So if a child's to have normal wiring in the brain to develop full language skills, left frontal has to be normal, left posterior has to be normal, and these two areas need to be linked together, working together in what's called coherence. This whole area back here behind the left ear is reading, reading comprehension. Now, the whole frontal part of the brain is involved in focus, concentration, emotional regulation, impulse control. The area, let's go down to 12 hertz, this area behind the right ear. This is the most important area in autism in understanding social cues, nonverbal social cues. It makes you aware of other people, how what you say or do affects other people. Reading people's intentions correctly, the area behind the right ear. Now, HZ means hertz, again, cycles per second. Again, as I said earlier, 1 to 4 is delta, 4 to 8 is theta, etc. 12 to 30 is beta. This brain map is processed through what's called a, an FDA-approved normative database. We use the gold standard normative database. So it tells us if any areas of the brain are not functioning within normal limits. And... At the bottom of each brain map, it has negative three to three. These are standard deviations. Normal functioning activity range is anywhere between negative two to plus two is a normal range. We want everything to be green. Now, this child was very was actually too low in delta. If you're too low in delta, it's like not having enough brakes on a car. Believe it or not, you need to have a certain amount of slow brain waves for the brain to have inhibition, but you don't want too many slow brain waves. This patient had was too low in delta. This pattern is very uh, commonly will cause very low frustration tolerance, anxiety, trouble sleeping. This child had none of those difficulties. So since the low delta was not causing symptoms, we decided not to treat it. We only treated her back here. If you look at the cursor here at 12, if you look at 12 hertz, this brownish color behind the right ear at 12 hertz, that part of the brain is offline. It's not functioning. It's in a resting state, so it's not able to do its job. We treat the patient. In those days, this was from years ago before we had some of the more uh, advanced technology we have. This is just pretty much basic neurofeedback based on brain mapping. And we want to get this 
child's brain functioning normally, get it out of that excessive alpha state back here to normal functioning. And I'll show you, this is her brain after 42 treatments on the right. And, you, and then we only treated her back here at 12 hertz. And as her, her brain reorganized through neuroplasticity to get this area working more normally, the whole brain reorganized. And you can see actually even the, the slow brain waves in Delta improved. The one on the left is a, a pre-treatment brain map. This is post-treatment brain map. Now, this brain map on the left it is telling us what the brain needs. It's screaming at us what, what the brain needs. So that is the blueprint of how we help every single individual. Now, when that fish jumps in the stream, this child just produced a healthy brainwave. And I can't, you can't see it clearly on this slide, but there's a point on the bottom part of the screen and they get a point. So, and by the way, neurofeedback, it's non-invasive, it's, it's painless, and it's recording what the brain is doing every milli, every second, every milli, it's recording what the brain is doing. And this screen with the auditory feedback, it's a neurophysiological feedback loop to the brain. So the brain is seeing the results of what it's doing so it can begin to modify and improve its own activity. Kids love this, by, by the way. Now, the audio-visual feedback is telling the brain when it's moving in the desired direction into the desired pattern or not. Again, positive feedback rewards when it's moving in the right direction. There's no reward, no points on the screen, uh, no auditory reinforcement if it's not producing the right brain wave. The child is getting points on the screen accompanied by the auditory tones. The rewards are the positive reinforcement, operant conditioning for improving brain functioning. Neurofeedback can actually increase the size and number of synaptic connections in the brain, which translates into improved brain functioning. With repetition, the brain learns to sustain these healthier patterns on its own. That's why it takes at least 42 sessions to stabilize these improvements. Now, I want to show you one more. This is just a brief uh, news, news clip, but it shows more in, in live action the, the neurofeedback, how it works. Every morning, Seth Munger takes his pill. Seth calls it his ADHD pill. The medication has become a way of life to help him focus, concentrate, and control himself something that Seth's mother said was all but impossible to the eight-year-old who was recently diagnosed with attention deficit hyperactivity disorder. He was kicked out of every preschool, but um, when he got into second grade, they were going to kick him out. And so at that point, we decided to go to the doctors. Seth had no friends. He did so poorly in school. When he had two good days, his grandmother framed this certificate and hung it on her wall. Every day he would have an outbreak. If a toy was out of place or something, you would want to make sure that that's fixed because he was going to have a tantrum. The medication helped, but at a cost. When I seen him on the medication, he lost his little soul. He wasn't himself. He had no personality like we were taking away his childhood. Seth's family found the Drake Institute of Behavioral Medicine in Southern California. Here, Dr. David Belkoff treats kids like Seth with neurofeedback. He calls it physical therapy for the brain. When you do a brain mapping of the child, we determine we can determine which area is out of balance that's causing the symptoms. The beeps you hear mean that Seth is producing a normal, healthy brainwave pattern. You're getting those neurons, those brain cells, to start firing more normally. So when you do it over and over and over, it, the brain begins to reorganize and readjust with how it functions. It's almost like readjusting the thermostat. How do you think it's helping you at school and at home? Well, I concentrate really. After six weeks of therapy, Dr. Velkov has lowered the dosage of Seth's medication by 25%, and they're not finished yet. Are you advocating that children not take medication? No. And no. only turn to this no, kind of no, therapy back? No, but we want, to, we want to minimize how many children have to be on these drugs. And those that are on the drugs, we want to be able to reduce the amount of medication that they're on. He got a little character to himself. He started wearing the hats and kids say hi to him and invite him places. 
How does that make you feel? It makes me feel really good for him. Seth has friends now. He made a turnaround in school. And at home, he and his mom can finally enjoy some quiet time. Thelma Gutierrez, CNN, Northridge, California.